I want to start off with a series of questions, um, which I won't have time to answer. But it's really the talk I would give is about the obstacles to Chinese film on the international market, concentrating on the U.S. for today. But how successful can any foreign language film be in the North American market? Um, can a film that's successful in China, a Chinese film, also be successful overseas? What can we learn by looking at the market for Chinese films in the U.S.? And if I had time, talk about U.S. films in China and co-productions. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the Hollywood relationship with China, which I probably won't have time to talk about? And another thing I won't have time to talk about, but I gave a talk similar to this at Beijing University um, r relatively recently. And that's why I put the Chinese up on, on the PowerPoint slides. Uh, should Asia, not the U.S., be the primary target market of Chinese films and co-productions? Because you take films like Cherby, Red Cliff, for example, did very, very well in South Korea and Japan, but not particularly well uh, in the United States. Okay, let me start off with a couple of examples of things that should have done well, uh, might have been expected to do well, but did not do well in the North American market. Starting with uh, Detective D, Di Ren Jie Zhi, Tong Tian Di Guo, excellent film. Uh, you can see in, in the poster, it shows a uh, masterpiece, great reviews, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Meet Sherlock Holmes, only a lot more fun, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, LA Times, epic film, New York Times, uh, a grand, this says it all, I think, a grand scale adventure filled with household names you don't know. And if you don't have names you know, people are not going to go to the cinema. I think A.O. Scott, in his review, said it best. He said, if we lived in a utopian, borderless world without subtitles, the arrival of Detective D would be a global multiplex event. The work of its director, Tsui Hawk, Shu Ke, would be at least as well known among American seekers of cinematic thrills as Jerry Bruckheimer, Michael Bay, and so on. Problem is, we don't live in a utopian world. Uh, sure, we'd like that, that to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> we don't, so that's why his film is showing in a museum and not, not, at, not at the LA Live. Um, uh, we don't live in a borderless world. Maybe 1% of the market in North America are for, for subtitled films. So you're already starting off with tremendous disadvantages for Chinese films. Um, so if you look at the box office um, for Detective D, domestic meaning the U.S., only 0.9%. 99.1% of the box office was foreign meaning China uh, and Chinese language territories. When I spoke in, at Beida, I, it was right before... It was before the Jinling Shi San Chai Flowers of War came out. And I talked about the advantages and disadvantages of, of that Zhang Yimou Christian Bale film. Most expensive film ever made in China. Uh, Zhang Yimou is a, is a name in the West, the only really name in the West for a director. Christian Bale, of course, is a big name. There's a lot of interest from Sony, Fox, Weinstein, Summit, Focus. But they passed on it because they knew it wouldn't do that well. And so it was picked up by Reckon Hill in row one. Uh, another advantage, a story about heroism, as the producer said, no longer Zhang Yimou's producer, but at that time, Zhang Weiping was the producer, uh, everybody can relate to this film. 40% of the dialogue in English, also good. China's official Oscar submission, best foreign language film. International cast. Those are the positives. L what are the disadvantages? Took Because this, this is supposed to be a model. Took Bale five months to read the script. Uh, took two years to get this thing off the ground, and they couldn't negotiate with any other stars while Bale was evaluating whether or not to do uh, the film. 60% of the dialogue in Chinese. This, in many ways, number four, is crucial. Uh, unfamiliar period drama, Sino-Japanese War. Uh, that's why they changed the title uh, to Flowers of War rather than Nanjing Massacre or something like that. Uh, but period dramas don't do well. I'll talk about Feng Shaogang's 1942 uh, very briefly next. Uh, not only that, but it's about the Nanjing Massacre. And so Christian Bale, we have a lot of slides about Christian Bale traveling around China, going to Lin Yixian, trying to meet Chen Guangcheng, because Christian Bale was criticized, basically, uh, for making propaganda for the Chinese, and he was very embarrassed. So he called CNN and said, I want to meet the Chinese dissident, who's the most famous dissident. So, uh, Unfamiliar period drama. Uh, Nanjing Massacre, everybody in China knows it. Uh, People outside China do not necessarily know it, so it looks like a propaganda film. Not the best choice if you're going to do a film with Christian Bale. And Zhang Yimou is really the only named director. Um, Feng Xiaogang's film, um, reviewing the past 1942, about a famine in 1942, Hunan province. 
a real downer to begin with, and it's a period piece uh, about a, a very important period of Chinese history. Even though he has Adrian Brody and Tim Robbins in the cast, it cannot do well in the U.S. Feng Shaogang tried before with Big Shot's Funeral with Donald Sutherland, uh, which was a big hit, made 50 million renminbi in China, made a total of $820 at the U.S. box office. Um, again, uh, Feng Shaogang doesn't speak English. Uh, Donald Sutherland, if you talk to my students, and you say Donald Sutherland uh, is starring in a film, who cares? Donald Sutherland can't open a film in the U.S. anymore. Maybe Kiefer Sutherland, not Donald. So that's not going to work either when that comes out. Rang Zi Fei, okay, let the bullets fly. Uh, Until Painted Skin 2, that was the biggest box office uh, hit of a Chinese language film in China. Excellent film. But again, if you look at the, what the LA Times said, um, when this film was shown at the Tribeca Film Festival in April in New York, people walked out. Uh, it had a very difficult time getting any distributor. And finally, I think AMC showed it in the Chinese communities in the U.S. Uh, Aftershock, Tangshan Da Di Zhen, U.S. market, 0.1% of its total gross. Uh, again, if you look at Aftershock, you see it's China, mainland China, Hong Kong, uh, Taiwan, Singapore, to some extent South Korea, a little bit of Vietnam, but certainly not in, in Western markets. Um, if, a, if a Chinese language film is good, or a Korean language or a Japanese language film is good, it'll simply, being remi simply be remade. Uh, whether it's, it's Ringu, the Japanese film, The Ring, uh, Shall We Dance, the Japanese film, Old Boy, the excellent Park Chan Wook South Korean film now being made by Spike Lee, actually it's supposed to be made by Spielberg and Will Smith, but the original uh, owner of the manga, Japanese manga uh, cartoon, threatened to sue because they sold the rights to Korea, not to the U.S., so Spielberg and Warner Brothers dropped out, uh, and now it's going to Spike Lee. It's a much lower kind of budget film. Um, so uh, the classic example is Departed, taken from Wu Jendao, Infernal Affairs, the Hong Kong. Great Hong Kong film was made by Martin Scorsese um, and won the Academy Award. In virtually... In every single case, uh, an Asian, very, very good Asian film that's remade in the United States, the box office internationally, is that 30 seconds or minutes? 30 seconds. 30 seconds, okay. Um, <laughs> the, <laughs> the box office is always bigger for the American film, the Hollywood remake. Uh, just a couple of last slides. You look at a woman, a gun, a noodle shop, uh, and China made 40 million U.S., in, in China made $40 million, in the United States made $190,000. You, the, these are Chinese remakes of American films. You look at what women want, um, it made only 1.2 percent. Okay, um, let's see, okay, uh, let me do the last one. I won't go through all the box office, but here's the last example because Huang Shishen talked about how Painted Skin 2 destroyed Chinese culture. Well, what Painted Skin 2 did in their advertising was to steal from Avatar and Black Swan so their poster was a combination of more successful Hollywood films. And, okay, I'll stop at this point.